Thank you, Jesus. My God, please be seated. Thank you, Lord. Finally, it's happening. Finally, the month of July has come. Finally, my breakthrough has come. Finally, my story is changing. Finally, I will testify. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. So we are so excited that Jesus is alive, that we serve a living God. Hallelujah. Tonight, I welcome all of you and I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. May God bless you for being here tonight. Amen. I would like us to get into the word uh, tonight. Um, we are talking about the power of prayer and fasting. Amen. The power of prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. And uh, just so that as we continue to engage, we may be able to maximize on what we are doing. Praise the Lord. Now, as a good habit, every time you come to church and you don't see somebody on an important service like this one, you are allowed to ask them, where were you? I didn't see you at church during prayer. Uh, I hope you'll be there tomorrow. Are you going to do that? Yes. Praise them. Just do that. To everyone, anyone that the Holy Spirit reminds you about, just send them a text. Hey, I didn't see you at prayer tonight. I hope you'll be there tomorrow. Don't write anything more than that. All right? Just say, just text them that you'll see what will happen tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Remember, we are our brother's keepers. You know, sometimes we might be in the church together, but we're going through difficult time challenges. And some people might be attacked by the enemy and they might feel discouraged. And because there is no one who is their keeper, the enemy gains more advantage over them. But that, just that reminder, that call might just loosen the shackles of the enemy. And that person might get a breakthrough for coming. Amen. Many testimonies I've heard where people say, I was really not up to coming to church. I must confess, I was not, I was not in the mood. But someone sent me a text and said, I hope you'll be there tomorrow. And something in me, they just appealed to my conscience. And I decided to come. Little did I know that when I get there, God has a word for me. So I want to challenge you to do just that tonight. All right? Somebody said the power of prayer and fasting. Isaiah 58, verse 6, praise the Lord Jesus. We are going down to verse 11, all right? It says, is, this, is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the straps of the yoke. To let the oppressed go free. And to break every yoke. Take a moment and look at that scripture. Can you see it? I want you to see it and then just think about your own life. I mean, in this fast that God has ordained, he says, particularly these things are going to happen. And tonight, by faith, you've got to say, my bones have got to be loosened. The straps have got to be loosened. I've got to go free after this prayer and fasting. And the yoke has got to break. Hallelujah. Somebody said the yoke has got to break. So he said, is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness? To undo the straps of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free? And to break every yoke? So prayer and fasting is about your liberty. It's about your liberation. It's about your deliverance. Somebody said, it's about my liberation. Say, it's about my liberation. So, when we talk about prayer and fasting, just don't think about your empty stomach. Think about freedom. Hello. Think about what? When your stomach talks to you, tell your stomach, it's for my freedom. Someone say, it's for my freedom. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness. We live in the world that is full of wickedness. Wickedness in the workplace. Wickedness in the community. Wickedness even in the family. But God says, by the fast he has appointed for us. It is for the loosening of those bonds of wickedness. To undo the straps of the yoke. So no matter how well the devil 
had strapped you down and strapped you to that yoke, when we engage in prayer and fasting, that strap is loosened. This fast is so that those who are oppressed by any kind and any form of oppression, they may go free. So the fast that God calls us to is not just so that we can lose some, you know, inches on our waistline and uh, cheeks and so forth. Hallelujah. But it's so that we may go free from every oppression. Oppression that has a name. Oppression that is not yet defined. But any form of oppression. Yesterday when we were in the service, the Spirit of God said to me, speak against the enemy who is working against the health of my people. Because the Lord showed me that there are people with ailments where now they are told to increase their medication dosage because that ailment is not getting better. The Lord says, I should say, it shall not get worse, but it will get better in the name of Jesus. So we refuse that they increase your dosage of that medication. We refuse that you need to take more medication. We refuse in the name of Jesus Christ. We say by the power of the blood of Jesus, be well in your body. Yes. Suddenly they told you one tablet won't do it, you need two. Because that thing is stubborn. I came with the word of the Lord to tell you, you shall not take more medication, but you shall be better in the name of Jesus. And so God wants the oppressed to go free. Oppression is never part of God's plan for your life. It is never in God's design and idea that you continue in oppression. Even if you are oppressed by a skin condition where they're saying your face has this issue, today I release an anointing that things get better even in your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Those headaches cannot be more intense than they are. I command them to cease in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever siege of torment Whatever siege of attack that is upon your life, I call it to stop today. Let it cease in the name of Jesus. Yes. Because you are not meant to be a slave. Glory to God. It is says to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Yokes are put on people, on things. And the yokes regulate the movements upon that which it is put upon. So when there is a yoke upon your life, you will know that you can move, but your movements are limited. You know that you can do more, but there is always something that limits your abilities. Tonight I declare that that yoke is broken by the power of the anointing. And may you break through from that yoke in Jesus' mighty name. May you reach your full potential in Jesus' mighty name. Oh my God. Let's go on. Verse 7 says, is, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your, from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn. So in this fasting again, it allows you to be in the position of being generous, of being a blessing to other people. Moreover, then it says, your light shall break forth. I declare by the anointing. That after tonight, your light is breaking forth like the dawning of a new day in the name of Jesus Christ. Every time we engage in a fast, we are triggering a new dawn upon our lives. May it be a new dawn for you after this prayer and fasting in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Somebody say new dawn. New dawn. Remember 
Every new day comes with new possibilities. Every new day comes with new strength and new vigor. Therefore, as your light breaks forth like new dawn, may the Lord renew your strength. May your inner man be strengthened that you rise to the occasion in Jesus' name. Says, and then your healing, your healing shall spring up speedily. Have I not been declaring your healing? Therefore, there it is written, your healing springs up speedily in the name of Jesus. 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 What they said will take a couple of months. Let it take a couple of weeks. What they said will take a couple of weeks. Let it take a couple of days. What they said will take a couple of days. Let it take a couple of hours. What they said will take a couple of hours. Let it take a couple of minutes. What they said will take a couple of minutes. Let it take a couple of seconds. What they said take a couple of seconds. Let it take an instant. Your healing is springing up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must know that when we engage in prayer and fasting, it is exactly what Jesus says that from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. When we come to a season of prayer and fasting, we are pleading with God. We are crying out to God. We are entreating God. But we are not negotiation, negotiating with the situations. We entreat God, but we don't entreat the situations. We entreat God to receive authority to command the situations. So we are taking it by force. Whatever that your mind is set on this week, may God give you the grace as you receive this word to take it by force. Take it by force. For the, the, the violent, take it by force. You cannot be a pretty face when it comes to these matters. You can't be a gentleman when it comes to these matters. You need to learn that certain things are taken by force because no one will ever hand them to you. You need to know how to gear up in the spirit. You need to know how to take on your spiritual weapons and put on a fight and say I'm taking it by force I've waited for too long I've given a prayer of fasted but this week I'm taking it by force this is a week where you don't play you pray like you've never prayed or whoever is not signing you pray until they wake up in the night as if they are dreaming and they are saying I've got to do something in the morning and when they get to the office they try to ignore it but as you have prayed and trusted God that, that push will be upon them something will compel them to say let me just sign this thing once and for all if you know what I'm talking about you are going to engage in prayer and begin to declare I'm taking it by force I'm taking it by force Because no one is going to hand it to you. No one is going to just give up their power to you. You're going to take it by force. And not the wicked people taking it by force. They are taking it by force, by forms of witchcraft, divination, all kinds of black magic. They are doing all kinds of things because they know no one will give it to them. You need to know how to engage your spirit in spiritual warfare. And fight for what belongs to you. You know when you are spiritual, you defend even things that seem to be dead. The Bible says there were bodies of those who were killed. But the women went and they stood there the whole night chasing away ravens. When you believe that God can still do something about your situation, you protect it in prayer and say it looks hopeless. But I won't allow the devil to bury it. It seems dead, but I won't allow it to be buried because I still believe there is a chance for resurrection do you believe it if you believe it say yes we take it by force he says then your righteousness shall go before you your righteousness shall go before you and we have the righteousness of Christ in us praise God it's not the righteousness of our own doing but the righteousness of Christ this is the righteousness that Jacob talked about. The righteousness that comes from God. God's 
told him, arise from this place and go down to your uncle's place and I will make you great there. And when I have helped you, you shall come back to this place. Jacob walked with that word, even though Laban kept him longer than he wanted. But his righteousness answered for him. And when Jacob left Laban's house, he was rich and blessed, highly favored in a way that is never thought of before. Because his righteousness answered him that when Laban was defrauding him, his righteousness made sure that what was meant to harm him worked for his advantage. And he left there as a man so very rich. So he says, then the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. When we engage in prayer and fasting, it eliminates the anxiety and the uncertainty that wants to trouble our minds. Like watch your back. When you engage in prayer and fasting, you don't have to watch your back because the glory of God becomes your rear back. All you do, you focus all your energy on what lies ahead of you. You don't have to worry about watching your back because there will be no sudden terror coming to you. There will be no sudden attack coming to you because the glory of the Lord is your rear guard. Even when you go to work you don't have to worry who's talking behind your back why because they've got God to answer to because anything done behind your back has got to deal with the glory of God which is your real God hallelujah then you shall call and the Lord will answer so the time of prayer and fasting is not just a time of keeping food away it's a time to call on God it's a time to call on the Lord. He says you will call and then the Lord will answer. The Lord is ready to answer but he's waiting for you to call. Then he says you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. In other words, if you stop blame shifting, if you Relieve yourself from all the burdens of unrighteousness and focus on me. Then you will hear my voice. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. Verse 11, and the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. How many of you know that when you are engaged in godly prayer and fasting, even your immune system shoots up? You didn't know that, so I'm telling you the truth now. When you pray and fast, it boosts your immune system. One of the immune boosters is prayer and fasting. That's the most effective one. No side effects. Too much vitamins, you need to do something for the gut. Because too much vitamins also affect the gut. But prayer and fasting is well balanced. Suitable for your body. Designed by the creator of the body. When you engage in prayer and fasting, even your bones get strong. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. You shall be like a watered garden. Like a spring of water. Whose waters do not fail. That's you. So this prayer and fasting is there not just to change your situation around you, but to transform your life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see that in prayer and fasting, what shows up is divine guidance. And the Lord will guide you continually. When you yield to the Lord in prayer and fasting, you receive divine guidance. I am the Lord your God who shows you the way that you should go. I satisfy your desire in scotch places. Where there is drought, you shall be satisfied. Because satisfaction comes from the one who created heavens and earth. Makes, make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden. Forever flourishing. You will thrive without an end. In fact, it shall be like a spring of water. You know, a spring of water is something that you can't control. If you try to stop it here, it springs up in another place. That's what the Lord says. says as you engage and seek him in prayer and fasting, you shall be like a spring of water. There will be no stopping of your imagining. You will keep on imagining. When they press you down, you emerge victoriously. 
and whose waters do not fail. Praise the Lord. Let's go through these things, then we pray. Prayer and fasting unleashes divine power to destroy the works of Satan. Whether you like it or not, there is somebody called Satan and whose works have to be destroyed. And you see, if you don't oppose the enemy, his opposition prevails in your life. Because you don't have to do anything for Satan to come after you. Just because you are human and you are made in the image of God, he wants to come after you. Praise the Lord. And we've got to engage in prayer and fasting so that this power is unleashed to work against the enemy, to defeat Satan, to push back darkness. Jesus' kingdom manifesto, unlike those of politicians, had a clear vision of disarming the powers of evil and liberating humanity to enjoy life in abundance. Jesus is clear in his manifesto. He speaks publicly for the first time in Luke 4 verse number 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus is saying, I was not merely reading. I was now announcing the reason why I came on earth. Was so that I may disarm every power of evil and that I may liberate every believing person to enjoy the kind of life I have come for them to enjoy. And so when we engage in prayer and fasting, we are ensuring that we live the life that Jesus came to give us by dying on the cross. Because he did not die in vain. He died so that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. He overcame death and overcame evil so that you and I may have the power to overcome evil. So fasting provides a platform for breakthrough in your life. When you fast, it gives you the platform for breakthroughs to take place in your life. A Christian that avoids fasting will always be avoided by breakthrough. There are people who constantly look for it, but they can't find it because they were also avoiding that which brings it. So you continually dark prayer and fasting. There are things that are also be darking for you. Breakthrough knows those who seek the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 17 verse 20 says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Note that this kind of evil does not simply respond to prayer, but this one responds to prayer that is coupled with fasting. So praying is good, but there are certain things that only respond when you, when you combine your prayer with fasting. He says that all things will be possible for you if you believe. But he says, you also claim that you believe. But let me take you deeper. Yes, you believe, but you cannot confront such resistance without being armed 
by the mystery of prayer and fasting. Because many people claim, we also believe. Yeah, God, that do you pray and do you fast? Because Jesus had to answer his disciples, asking him, why could we not drive out this spirit? Because when you sent up and city, come out, come out. Uposegem Liluen, Uposegemanze. Masitia and Koshi Timon, Li manifesta Kakulakta. We have done it before. What happened this time? He says, This kind does not come out except prayer and fasting. So you must be sensitive and be able to discern the things that you are facing every time. You cannot be someone that just works on a program and you are stereotyped about everything. You've got to be someone that is able to discern that what I'm facing now is not just an ordinary challenge. This one demands out of me fasting and prayer. Fasting ushers us into the realm of endless possibilities. It says this one will go out so all the others can go out without. But this kind of resistance is dealt with through prayer and fasting. So, when we fast, it ushers us into the realm of endless possibilities. Hallelujah. Endless possibilities. A realm where decisions are changed overnight without a reasonable explanation, where things are shifted around without any logical explanation, where the supernatural imposes itself on the natural order where the divine takes over the natural that's the work of prayer and fasting you know the bible says when jesus came from prayer and fasting he came back with power and authority the bible says his fame went throughout the whole of bethlehem why because the power that was unleashed over his life became visible unto all. You know, after these three days, many people don't tell you, but there's always something different about you after you've prayed and fasted because the power unleashed on you is visible unto all. It's just that you don't walk in that consciousness. You are not aware of it. Fasting and prayer capacitates your faith to deal with stubborn situations. As much as we have faith, but fasting gives an extended capacity to your faith so that your faith may deal with stubborn situations. There are stubborn situations that even sometimes when people say we need to pray, I say no, let's talk after three days. Because even at that time I feel that this thing needs me to be a bit more capacitated to deal with this matter. You know, it's like when you are a lawyer and you are dealing with a case, maybe you are an attorney and you are faced with a challenge, then you say, uh, we'll seek for an adjournment because now you want to go consult with the books so that you capacitate your mind for, the, for further arguments. Not that you didn't study, but at this point you realize that you, you need to go and consult knowledge that is more intense than the one you came with so that you are capacitated to make further arguments. It is in the same way when we deal with issues. We've got the Holy Spirit. We have the word. We've got the faith. But when we go to fast, we are receiving further advancement in our faith and gaining more capacity capacity to deal with that stubborn situation. Fasting gives you power to break free from the destruction of the belly. You know, the destruction of the belly is that you would do anything as long as it puts food in your stomach. That's a destruction of the belly. You will sell with the truth just for you to get something in the, in the belly. You know, the destruction of the belly is to follow natural desires more than you follow the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know that I tell you the truth? <laughs> uh, 
You know, most of the time, preachers will tell you when they are going to have an intense time of preaching, they don't like to eat a lot. Because when your stomach is too full, your body wants to relax. It's not in the mode of dealing with intense matters. That's why even in workshops, the easy matters are left for after lunch. Because that's like the graveyard session. No one is even interested. They're just just your marking time. Praise the Lord. So when you are controlled by food, you can't do much as far as the exploits of faith are concerned. You must not be the shop food lover, food lovers. <laughs> It's good. Some, some of you, if you don't get food, you, you'd want to murder someone. No. And the devil plays this trick where people are controlled by their belly. Not so long ago, during the lockdown, there was a, 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 a man who is a spiritualist like a, 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 a witch was inviting gospel artists to come and sing in his gatherings. And some went and their answer was, we need to eat. And some preachers even went and preached for him Though he is working for the other kingdom, not the kingdom of light. But because they are not people empowered spiritually, they cannot overcome the temptation of the belly. And they fell into the trap of the destruction of the belly. This destruction is real. That even if you are a pastor and you are not empowered in faith, Members with money can control you to preach what is pleasing to them. If you have not overcome the demands of the belly, you can't do much for the kingdom of God. And so, now the lockdown is gone. But what they did remains. And they've lost credibility to some of us, not to everyone. Who had known them to be true worshippers of God. How can you celebrate in the altar of darkness. And also dance in the altar of light. There can never be that out of one fountain. Sweet and bitter water come out. But the destruction of the belly. Will cause people to find themselves where they are not supposed to be. Just for the sake of money. So when we are not accustomed to prayer and fasting, the, the flesh and the demands of satisfaction, instant gratification gets the better of you. Philippians 3 verse 19. It says, whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? Who mind earthly things? These people are Governed by their stomachs. Always looking for new ways to avoid fasting. Jesus already fasted for us. Why are we fasting? Then why are you praying? Because Jesus prayed more than he fasted. Thank you Jesus. And so. Why are you dying? Because Jesus already died for you. Why are you having a funeral policy? So people. <laughs> are always avoiding the discipline of prayer and fasting and this makes their stomachs to be their gods. Anything that puts money in their stomach, they will do it. Other people have even turned away from the faith, become rebellious against the church because of their stomach. In their own mind, they know that it's not right, but because the one who is rebelling is the one who feeds them, they've also rebelled. Rebels by consequence of need. Fasting 
expedites answers to prayer. Fasting expedites answers to prayer. When you pray and fast, it is as if you are pressing a button that gives an alert to God that this matter requires urgent attention. <laughs> when you pray and fast, it's not like when you are praying and you are not fasting. When you are in fasting and then you pray, your prayers are like highlighted. <laughs> Uh, it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a note that says it needs urgent attention. Fasting expedites answers to prayer. Where we read in Isaiah 58 verse 9 says, you shall call and the Lord will answer. It's as simple as that. There's no he might, he will answer. Esther chapter 4 verse 15 says, then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shunan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days. Night or day, my mates and I will fast likewise. So and so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. They knew that the matter at hand was of utmost importance because the lives of all Jews was under serious threat and attack. A law was being passed to put them under severe bondage. And then they brought the matter to Esther and said, Esther, don't think that you'll survive because you're a queen. You are also a Jew. If this law passes against all Jews, you will also suffer the consequences. Esther knew that this one did not need a meeting to negotiate with the king. She said, call for a fast and I will also fast myself because we need an urgent answer. We are here, church, because some matters in our lives need urgent answers. Some matters need urgent answers. Lord, they've given me 30 days and I don't have 30 days. Won't you come through for me? That's what fasting does. Lord, I need this job. They say they need five years experience. I'm six months short of the five years. But you know I'm good for it, Lord. Then you engage in prayer and fasting to expedite those answers. He says, I will fast as well. Oh, glory to God. And then I will go and do what is against the law. Because I have the audacity to do it that I've now gone to God who is able to do the impossible. Be prepared to engage your heart in seeking the face of the Lord. When we are fasting and praying, it's not just so the days can go by. It's so that you can engage your heart into seeking the face of the Lord. When you come out of prayer and fasting, don't come out with just answers to your prayer. Come out a transformed person. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, A man's heart devised his way, but the Lord directed his steps. So you must seek the heart of God so that the Lord will direct your steps. Commit your heart in seeking God. I talked in the last prayer and fasting about the heart and how deceitful the heart can be. That's why your heart must be committed to seeking God so that God can create a clean heart in you. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And there's now the key. How can I find him? How can I have that encounter with God? Are you searching him with all your heart? Tell your neighbor, search with all your heart. When you search with all your heart, you search with all your being, with all your diligence, you search with all your heart. You give everything of yours into inquiring of the Lord, wanting to know God in a better way, asking God to teach you his high ways. Seeking God to make a difference in your life. Create what he desires out of you. Opening up yourself to him to do his will. Seeking him with all your heart. 
when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Someone said, I, I prayed, you know, one day I prayed uh, for, I heard one boy saying he had fasted for 40 days, which was a lie. Uh, but he had said that, that he had fasted for 40 days and uh, nothing happened. He was even coughing blood. Uh, I know he's a liar, so that never happened. But because he has turned away from the faith, he was just wanting to make a statement so people can believe him. No one can seek God for that long and come back the same man he was. Never, never. He was doing something else. No one seeks God for that long and come back. The Bible makes it clear. Moses was in the cloud for 40 days. When he came out, no one could look at his face. He was shining like the sun. No one seeks God for that long and comes back with a story like that. No. He was not seeking the Lord with his heart. He was seeking answers, not the Lord. When we pray, we don't seek answers. We seek the Lord who has the answers. We don't seek the answers. We don't seek the miracles. We don't seek the power. We seek God who supplies all that we might need. There's the difference here. Other people say, I'm also going to fasting because I'm seeking revelations. We don't seek revelations. We seek the revelator. Or the revealer. So we are not looking for revelations. We are not looking for sermons. We are looking for God. Whom the sermon is all about. So when you find him. You found everything. Paul says. I have been in this pursuit. And he says. All the things that were gained unto me. I considered them as rubbish. So that I may know him. This is the man who is already written a lot of epistles. But he says, I am still throwing off things from the past. So that I may know him and the power of his might. And even attain unto his resurrection. Says, I can't get to know him. When I think I know him, he reveals himself all the more. He says, that I may know him. I'm able to throw back the things that are behind me. I forget about the things that are behind me. And I stretch myself to the things that are ahead of me. That I may reach my high calling in him. He's saying, I still need to know him. You cannot have an early arrival mentality. That's why people say, but we fasted last day. What's it this year? We, we have not known him. We need to know him more. What you think you know is a fraction of what you can. Jesus says, I can't tell you everything. Your mind can never understand. But after I have gone, the Holy Spirit will come. And he will try to make sense of the things that I've told you. He will even tell you the things I could not tell you. Because your natural mind cannot fathom these things. But by the Spirit, you will receive understanding. So then, no one can say, I sought the Lord. For so long and then he come and tell different stories. It's a lie. He was busy playing hunger strike. Hallelujah. Pro Psalms 27 verse 8. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. It must come from your heart. There's got to be a desire in your heart to seek. I'm, I'm teaching you uh, Simple dynamics of working this thing. You've got pressure for God to answer your prayer. But God does not respond to pressure. He responds to faith. And God is given to fellowship. So when we pray and fast, we are not driven by the pressure of our problems. We are driven by faith in him. And we are maximizing on the opportunity for fellowship. Because once we are in fellowship with him, it is natural for him to make right whatever is not right in our lives. Because he cannot be in fellowship with us having things that are not right and it remains so. Because in fellowship, there is an exchange. We give him our weakness, he gives us his strength. So in prayer and fasting is an opportunity to maximize on our fellowship with God. He says, when you said you, I, we must seek your face, then I said, your face, Lord, will I seek. Your face. Why face? Face is the identity of a person. Am I correct? On your ID card, what is there? Your face. 
If someone says, I saw you, they don't talk about your legs. They talk about your face. I saw you. They don't talk about your shoulder. They talk about your face. So the face talks of the essence of the person. That's why the world is now moving on what is called face recognition. So when we seek God, it's about knowing his person. Not just knowing about his name, but to know his person. Seek his face. Let me try and maybe conclude. But here you see as we finish off this part, Isaiah 58, 10 says, if you pour yourself out, there's got to be a pouring out of yourself when you seek God. Because when you seek him, you pour out yourself so that he may pour into you. He can't pour into you until you've poured out. Fasting provides a conducive environment for seeking the Lord. Because fasting, even in your mind, you know that when you are fasting, you are seeking God, you're focusing on God. It's an opportunity to push certain things away from you, certain pleasures, certain habits, hobbies. You are setting this time as a time set apart to consecrate yourself before the Lord. That's why fasting is a conducive environment to seek the Lord. I always encourage the church members, these three days are announced so that you can set your life in order in accordance to this time and this season so that you can be aligned with the working of God in your life. Let this be the three days which are so conducive as an environment of seeking God. Hallelujah. Acts 13 and verse 2 says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Now, all it is the New Testament now. Stop telling us that fasting is not for the covenant of grace. These guys were in the covenant of grace. These are apostles after Jesus. Even here, these are not the just, just the 12. There were more apostles added. These people, they were praying and fasting. The Holy Spirit said, because it seems as if the Holy Spirit speaks more when we are praying and fasting. Because when we pray and fast, we tend to be more open to the promptings of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Then the Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I call them. You see, when we pray and fast, it's conducive for God to speak. Pray and fasting opens up your spirit to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. To the promptings of the Holy Spirit. When you are praying and fasting, your heart is more open. And you keep on saying, Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to my heart. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. So, and then two more things. What are the blessings reserved for us in fasting and prayer? God takes over our battles. God takes over our battles. When we pray and fast, it is us handing over the battle to God. To say, Lord, I'm handing it over to you. God takes over our battles. God steps in. God steps in. Oh, glory to Jesus. Where we feel as if we are falling short, God steps in. Where we feel as if we don't have what it takes, God steps in. Where we feel as if we are losing the battle, God steps in. Where we feel that we are outnumbered, God steps in. Where we feel that we are exposed, God steps in. For he is the rock that is higher than I. Thank you, Lord. Ezra 8 verse 21. Some of you for the first time, you are hearing that there's the book of Ezra in, Ezra in the Bible. You learned something new today. Praise God. Ezra chapter 8 verse 21. It's in the Old Testament. Then I proclaim a fast. Somebody say a fast. So this thing of fasting, don't take it for granted. I always joke about it and say, Jobunga funuk fast and you sazo fast. Sazo fast a special and I said to a gay no go. 
Je le maquille, tu n'as pas eu l'autre. Hey, vous êtes faste. Vous êtes faste. Vous êtes en 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 faste. Vous La lelu sazo faster we. Sazo ku fastiswa nje inkinga. Ezo vani kale ngo 5 x 10. Ikiti misu suku longa. Kyo sha u 7 wanta mbamu. Uriela zuta ngaze nguti mbibu kuta. Uya koka, uya koka. Uya koka, uya koka. Hey, tell me kind sazo faster yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, God takes over our battles. He says, then I proclaim a fast day at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God. It's a time of humbling ourselves. To seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and our possessions. We are born and again this morning and again to Elu, la gezi je uwine ilot, wangi shu tilda len lot. Uwine u 250 million. Ungaz go tubu nga utata, ngoba ngegu salu ngu full day, no mu half day fasting. Ubu zungul ngul, what is the right way for me to take? Sometimes even when you get great opportunities, you need to take a moment of seeking God's will for you in that situation. Some opportunities may present themselves as great opportunities, but you still need to seek God and say, Lord, what is the right way for me? Lord, what is the right way for my children? What is the right way for my possessions? They stopped there and they called on the fast to seek the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says, verse 22, I love this. Because again, when you get into a time of fast, you are hopelessly declaring that I am nothing without you, Lord. I am completely dependent on you. I am hopeless without you. I'm so reliable. I'm so I'm so relying on you that I can't do it on my own. He says, "For I was ashamed to request the king." I go for the good uben uben amasho no elak band. Okay, to gian kulun kuli o kala gian. O tinias bako na kotang na masho. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his uh, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. faith, There's a level in your life now who figure out my soul, my friend, who trade a band. Who sang a concert, a cool and goes, who think I trade a band too much. A song in one, who sung a lemon to La Raza Bebico. Unculunculo Fana now, or seven Zelabam Salila. And so we are Anjan, Pongos in your Telak born. Who saw when, who tag a conjun out, when or seven Zelabam Salila, who saw when what and Salas when in Zolta or Colega, when young Nigo Fiso and Kisioya, sang his Salel and Gosang Sawas, who are like born, Nanzalumu Sababa, sang his Abachela. He says, so we fasted and entreated our God for this. And he answered our prayer. 
Inkinga yetu sibona ngathi kulula ukuyocela kubantu sibona ngathi kulula ukuyokhompleina nokuyobalisela abantu kuno umuntu othatha usuku lonke eyohlala emzini omzalwane elokhe incenga kancane indaba yakhe kanti uzocela imali yengane zesikolo ahlala usuku lonke eqoqa amahlaya ngayo indawo ukuze masesukuma asukume nokuthi ngiyahamba nje angazi nokuthi ngiyaphi ngoba le ngalo ifanele ke yesikolo uhlezi usuku lonke uzonqenga u2000 usuku lonke Ganti ngabu sale from morning. Hey, now when it's got Jesu. What you mong ang penduli, ang na lusizo. Mong ang keleleli, ang na li tempa. Inki nga yetu siya kutalelu sale la bantu. Kota skwazo sale la yena. Bati laba sesbon. Kota sawazo kwele mu vasegli ankos. Ngoba isnigi mfumi yo kuti hambani. Ya buzu tini alfuna nu sizo. Sata silti ngobu nkulu nkulu ya baluela. Aba melika malaku ya bafigela. Sizo buyela kanjane mu. Oh thank you Jesus. Aku fuku kolo kwe tuba zaluane. Isi nto zise zimiyama. Kotu tanguazu buyele kaya. Yo kulu manabo. Ngoba manga buyele kaya. Umaluzo mwote ati ngakjela. Ukutu tingu kwenzu msebezi. Ubuyela kanjane muva. Ngoba baso kjeli zinto zabo. Ukala kiena. Utiko. Sibonka bakhalela uyaba sebenzela angenza suka kuwe amazokuphila kuwe uyisinqwa sokuphila uyikho konke abantu baze bakholwe ukuthi sinayo yonke into ngazo zonke ikhathi kanti isikhathi esiningi isuku esithulisa ukuthi asakwazi ukubuyela kubona ngoba sesabatshela ukuthi umkhulu ongakithi kunalo sezweni uhamba phambi kwethu ehlela emva magebhu gebhu wenza indlela ehlane nomfula kahlonga sibe manje asikwazi ukubuyela emuva ingakho singena enkonzweni yokuzila ukudla nokuthandaza thank you jesus so we fasted and we prayed and God answered our prayer. Oh, let's stand as we pray. As we pray and fast, God will answer our prayer. He will take over our battles. Angsawas gyochelo kolik uguti has njalo manglam sebenzin givan ng pupen sungeswa inyok. Ngoba bazo mchela ma solution hapa. Ma ifane nyo kule kankulu ngulu. When ute inyo kazinga pansu kwa nyo litu. Ute suyo nyatela pesu kwa nyo mabulu lunofeseela. Angwazu kyo bachela sengi zenga asho. Uguti mpiwa manta neku ngelelela. Ifasting ya banta bata nsena hii option. God is my only way out of this. I don't have an option. Omunyu ngono ngobu getu nome kuleka kota buya asukuti uma ukona, ubabu ukona. Kona kono mundo oti uma ukona kota iseki nite ngangsiza ngayo. Ngobi nite ngiti nga usei ngapezu kwa kena usei pege mina. Abanya gulula noma kituwa kutanda sabana nki ngoba upei ukona. Uyangina kota kono ta ngnalu siso. Don't have another option. Lift up your hands as we pray. I don't have another option. Lord, I will seek you. Ngizofuna wena nkosi. Ngizofuna wena. Ngizofuna wena. Ngizofuna wena. Ngoba ngnalo siso. Oh, God Almighty. Kusho wena. Kutu yo zes kukus chete mashombe ako. Lift up your voice. Begin to call unto him. Begin to cry out to him. Begin to call unto him. Begin to cry out to him in the name of Jesus. Because he's a God who answers prayer. He hears us when we call. He hears us when we call. He hears us when we call. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Segu vela, segu vela, segu vela, segu vela, segu vela, segu vela.